everybody, my name's Liz, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So before I get into today's vlog, I just want to, if you're watching and you celebrate Christmas, I do hope that you manage to have a lovely Christmas. I know it's been very different for a lot of us this year. Um, we ended up spending Christmas at home because we were put into tier four. We were planning to do that anyway because my husband and I are both teachers and we just thought that was the safest thing to do. Um, and although it was really sad not seeing family, there were some positives in terms of not feeling like we have to keep rushing here, there and everywhere to see everybody. It was quite nice to have a huge chunk of time, just the four of us at home relaxing. So I do hope you managed to find some time for yourself over the Christmas break. And I do hope that you had a lovely time and happy new year. So today's video is going to be me sharing all of my December makes. So what I got sewn up in the month of December. Now I did share a December makes plans video where I talked about lots of different things that I wanted to make, not just for myself, but for my family and gifts. And I just recently published a vlog where I share all of those sewing gifts that I got made up. Um, and I'll link that down below so that you can check that out if you haven't already. Um, I am going to be putting on some of the makes today because I haven't got photos of all of them. And once I'd finished work, in the end, I ended up sewing quite a lot of things, which I'm going to share today. Um, I think I talked in one of my vlogs recently about just not really having the motivation to sew at the moment. Um, and I think that was just a combination of feeling really tired from work and also just the busyness of um, the autumn term in a school, especially around Christmas. So I just didn't have any motivation to sew. So the first two weeks of December, I didn't actually sit down and sew anything. I've got a couple of things cut out, but I didn't sew anything. Um, but then once I finished work, um, my sewj came back with a vengeance and I've ended up sewing up, I think I worked it out, there's about 18 things that I sewed in the Christmas break. Um, and not all of those are for me. Um, I sewed quite a lot of things as gifts and a few things for my husband. So I will put pictures in of those things because the duffel coats that I made and the pajamas, they've already been gifted. So I don't actually have them to show you. I do have the patterns and I'll talk about um, how I found the patterns to sew up, but I don't actually have the physical garments to hold up and show you. So I'll start off by telling you what I'm wearing and what I'm wearing is actually something that I made up um, in December. Um, before I stand up and, and talk to you about that, the sun, normally when I film, I find it difficult to get enough light, but the sun seems to be um, peeping through the clouds on and off. Um, it's just gone back behind the clouds. So if it does get really, really bright, I'm really sorry it's the sunshine and I can't really do a huge amount about that. Um, so apologies for that. But so I will start with what I'm wearing. Let me grab the book. I am wearing a pair of pyjamas. So I made two pairs of pyjamas for myself uh, this month. I made a pair of pyjamas for my husband and then two pairs of pyjamas for children. Um, these ones are made from this gorgeous tie-dye jersey fabric, which I got from Oso. And I'll link their shop down below because I think that they might still have some in. This is the pastel version and they had a different colourway of it as well. So I'll link their shop down below if you do want to go and buy yourself some. But I used the Juno pyjamas, which is out of the Tilly and the Button Make It Simple book. And I've used this pattern before. I made myself some um, pink and red striped pyjamas. And I've also made myself some alien print pyjamas. And I just love it. It's a really comfortable pyjama pattern. Um, so what you do, if I just find the pattern to show you. It's a really comfortable pyjama pattern. Um, it's got an elasticated waist on the top. Um, and then you can make short sleeves or you can make long sleeves. I should have had this page ready. Here we go. So this is the pattern, the Juno pyjamas. So you can do the long sleeve top. I get really hot at night, so I prefer to just do the short sleeve. So I just chopped off the sleeve. Um, those are the line drawings for the pyjamas. Um, the pyjama top, if I hold the book up properly, um, has got a cuff here and then the bottoms have got a really deep cuff at the bottom too. They're sort of almost like a legging style pyjama bottom. Um, so although leggings make you think that they're quite fitted, these aren't, there's still a bit of room in them and they're super comfortable because they're made from jersey. And then the top has got this neck band and then like I said, you can put the deep cuff on. I chose not to and I've just got short sleeves because I get too hot otherwise. Um, it comes in sizes, UK 6 to UK 24. Um, I sized up and went with a UK 10 um, and it just gives me a bit more room. I don't like pyjamas being too figure hugging. 
So the UK six measurements are 31 and a half inch bust, 31 and a half inch waist and 31 and a half inch hips. Um, and then UK 24 is 49 and a quarter inch bust, waist and hips. And it also gives you the finished garment measurements. Um, they, it's made for jersey, so light to medium weight jersey or point tail knit fabric with at least 10% crosswise stretch. Um, and they suggest that you pick something that feels soft and breathable against your skin and then ribbing for the neck band and cuffs. I didn't use different ribbing for the neck band and cuffs, I just used the same fabric. So I'll stand up so you can see what these look like. I do apologise, the sun is starting to shine through again, but you know, if it makes it too bright for you to see. But this is just a straightforward t-shirt with the short sleeves. Uh, my hips are here, so it finishes just about here. And then you've got like a waistband. So you sew the elastic into the top of the trousers and then fold it over and then top stitch it in place. So I've got a zigzag stitch, which goes all the way around. Um, and yeah, I just love this fabric. I think it's quite fun for pajamas. I'll stand up, I've got my slippers on. Um, I'll stand up so you can see what the trousers look like. And then those are the cuffs. So super comfortable. I've made this pattern three times now and it's a really straightforward pattern. Um, what I love about the Make It Simple book is Tilly breaks down how long each step will take you. So it always tells you what the cutting time is and then also what the sewing time is. So cutting time is 50 minutes and sewing time two hours and 40 minutes. I probably took a bit less than two hours and 40 minutes and I think that's because I used my overlock to sew most of it. The only time I jumped onto my sewing machine was to top stitch the, the neckband and to sew in the elastic because you do need your sewing machine really for that. Really straightforward, comes together quite easily. Um, the only fiddly bits really are the neckband, just taking your time to make sure um, that you've got that in place and it sits flat. And then also with the elastic, just making sure that you um, distribute the elastic evenly around the top of the waistband. So I'm really pleased to have a pair of really comfortable pyjamas in my wardrobe. The weather started to feel a bit chilly. Um, normally in my house it's quite warm, but when the weather does start to dip in temperature outside, we do start to feel it in the evenings. So it's quite nice to have, um, I'm gonna move back a little bit because of the sunshine. It's quite nice to have um, a pair of pajamas that I can just throw on when I get home from work. Um, yeah, so I'm really pleased with these ones. So this was the first thing. I mean, these aren't in order, but this is the first thing that I'm sharing with you. So I'm gonna get changed into the next um, outfit that I want to share with you. And the next one is another pair of pajamas. Okay, I am back and I've got changed into my second make. So it's another pair of pajamas. Before I go on to what the pattern is and talk a bit more about these pajamas and show you them, um, I meant to say at the start, you might want to grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee or a drink because I think this vlog is going to be quite a long one. Um, I'm already about six or seven minutes in and I'm only on to my second make. Um, so this pattern is by Sew Over It and it's a relatively new pattern and it's called the Luna Pajamas. So it's a crossover wrap style top and then just a standard pajama bottom with an elasticated waist. Comes in sizes 6 to 30, which I think is fantastic. It's got a really inclusive size range, which I really love when pattern companies do that. These are the line drawings, just, just, just to show you what they look like. Um, so it's a wrap over, crossover with a tie. And then you almost get this like peplum type style because this is where the tie detail is on the hip. Um, or waist, should I say. And then you've got this just standard um, straight-legged pyjama bottom with the elasticated casing on the top. Um, fabric recommendations, light to medium weight woven fabrics with drape, like a rayon, a viscose, cotton lawn, cotton voile, double gauze and linen. You also need two metres of biaseam tape interfacing and one and a half metres of two centimetre elastic. I would say with the elastic, Go with what's comfortable for you. It doesn't have to be two centimetres. It's entirely up to you. I think I went with a slightly wider elastic for the top. Um, you will know what feels more comfortable for you. I think I just went with whatever I had in my elastic drawer. Um, so in terms of sizes, I went off my bust measurement because if I'm doing um, a wrap style dress or top, I like to go off what my bust measurement is because I do struggle with wrap style tops quite often I have to do a full bust adjustment um, and that is because my bust measurement always puts me in a larger size than my waist and my hips would so I went with a size 10 because my bust is a 34 inch so a size 10 is a 35 inch 
bust, 28 inch waist and a 38 inch hip. So that is quite wide for my hip. So I think I did size down for the trousers and I went with an eight because my hip measurement is 35 inches. Um, and it fits me really nicely. It's really comfortable pajamas. So it's got a long sleeve top option. And I did go with the long sleeves, despite the fact when I go to sleep, I tend to prefer a short sleeve because I get quite hot. And actually I've worn this to bed and I do feel quite hot in it. So I think I will chop it off and make it a short sleeve because I think that'll be a bit more comfortable. I went for this, um, I think it's called a stone washed satin fabric, which I got from Fabric Godmother. It came in the Dream Wardrobe box in November. Um, and it's in this lovely blue colourway. If I come forward, you can see it's got this slight sheen to it and it's really soft and silky. So actually it's made a really lovely pair of pyjamas. So if I stand back so you can see what the top looks like. So it is this wrap over. It's not too low because I also worry about wraps being too low and exposing myself, even though it's for bedtime. Um, so yeah, it crosses over here and then you it, the tie goes round the back and then you tie it on this side and then it creates this sort of peplum type look, which I quite like. I was worried about the tie detail being uncomfortable in bed, but because I've used quite a soft fabric, it's not uncomfortable at all. Um, and then you've got just the elasticated waist here for the trousers. Um, and then I'll just turn around so you can see what it looks like at the back. And then I'll also stand up just so you can see what the trousers look like. So they're quite a standard pajama bottom. Um, these are quite long on me. I'm five foot five. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but they are quite long. They go beyond my ankle, which again, I don't mind because it's pajamas, but that's something to consider if you're slightly taller than I am or slightly shorter than I am, should I say. Um, in terms of the sleeve length, um, that's quite nice on me. I like it being quite long. I like being able to do this. Um, it's comfortable. So yeah, they're just things to consider. In terms of sewing it up, it sewed up really easily. It was quite straightforward. Um, the only fiddly bit I found was inserting the sleeves. Um, they seemed quite big for um, when I was inserting them. So I had to just really take my time easing the sleeve into the sleeve head. Um, you interface, or I say interface, you use the bias tape. Is that what it's called? I'm probably calling it the wrong thing. No, bias seam tape interfacing along here. And the top is finished with a facing, which I quite like. Um, and then you've just got a gap here on the side um, where you top stitch it. You leave the gap when you're sewing it together and you top stitch it. And then that's got the little gap for the strap to come through, the tie to come through so you can fasten it round. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased with how these turned out and I can see plenty more in my wardrobe. I've got a cotton fabric that's floral that I, came in the same box as this fabric, which I would really like to use to make another pair of pajamas. But I will just use a short sleeve instead of a long sleeve, but that's just my personal preference because I get quite hot um, when I go to sleep. Really comfortable and really straightforward to make. So um, a great pattern really. And I feel like I've got a really nice luxury pair of pajamas, which is lovely. Um, I don't think there's anything else really that needs to be said about those pajamas. Oh, one thing I will say actually is the pajama bottom pattern. It comes as one massive piece, so you cut two. Um, so it does mean, which is another really nice uh, um, touch with these pajamas, is you don't have a seam line running down here because you wrap that leg round and you've got the seam line on the inside rather than the outside. So it just makes it more comfortable. Like if you sleep on your side, um, yeah, if you sleep on your side, then you haven't got that seam digging into your leg. Um, so it's just another way of making the pyjamas a bit more comfortable. So really great pattern, um, would highly recommend it, really enjoyable sew, um, and I can definitely see more Luna pyjamas in my um, wardrobe or in my pyjama wardrobe. Um, I went through a phase a few weeks ago when I first finished of making lots and lots of party clothes, even though we're not going anywhere, I just wanted to make lots of party dresses with sparkles, which you'll see. Um, and then the last part of the Christmas holidays, I've wanted to make lots of cosy pyjamas. So that's what I've been busy doing. So that is make number two. Um, I will stay in my pyjamas for now. And I will talk to you about makes three and four, which were the duffel coats. Now I've already talked about these in my December gifts, Christmas gifts um, vlog, which I'll link down below if you haven't seen that. But I made some duffel coats for my uh, nephew 
He's so cute. My sister sent me a video of him opening the parcel and putting on his coat and he just absolutely loved it. It was so lovely. I will put pictures in of him wearing the coat because my sister's given me permission to do that. Um, so I made one for him and then I also made a duffel coat for our friend um, who's got a little one and we delivered it on Christmas Eve and he was so cute when we gave him the parcel. It was absolutely adorable. Anyway, the pattern that I chose to make was the new pattern by Poppy and Jazz, which is the walnut duffel coat. And this comes in ages 18 months to six years. Thank you so much to everybody that's recommended patterns that would be suitable for my girls. Um, I, I can't remember what the pattern was that was recommended to me, but I've been recommended a couple of duffel coat patterns. If I can remember them, I'll pop them in the comments down below if you're looking for a duffel coat for um, preteens. So my children are 10 and 12. I could use the Eden coat if I wanted to make a duffel for myself and that might fit my 12 year old because she's quite tall. Um, so yeah, that's something that I want to make in 2021. I want to make some duffel coats for my girls. So I use this pattern, Poppy and Jazz. Comes in ages 18 months to six years. Really straightforward sew, really enjoyable sew actually. These are the line drawings. So you can choose to either finish the seams with bias tape or you can choose to line the coats. I chose to line the coats and then you can also create your own toggles by using some cord and toggle buttons or you can buy a pack and I'll put images in somewhere of what the prim duffel, um, what they're called, the toggle, I think they're called toggles, the, the duffel coat fastenings. I'll put a picture in of what the prim ones look like because I actually opted to buy the prim buttons from Like So Amazing because I was too worried about making my own and messing the coat up. I think because they're gifts. Um, I, and I talked about this in my Christmas December um, when I share all the things that I made as gifts. I talk about um, when I was sewing up gifts, I really hesitated because I was just so worried about making a mistake and then not feeling like I'd be able to gift them. So um, I used wool for both of the coats and I've got scraps of the fabric here so I can share it with you. So I used this beautiful red wool that I got from Like So Amazing. Um, and I'll pop a link down below to Sarah's shop if she's got any left. And then for the other coat, I used this forest green wool that I got from um, Sew Over It, and that's beautiful. Now, it was interesting because they're both wools, but the forest green wool was a bit more lightweight, so it's a bit drapier. Whereas this wool from Like So Amazing was slightly firmer and it's got less of a drape. So this one felt like a more um, sort of thicker, warmer coat than this one. Um, I still think it'll be warm because it's wool. They were both just as easy to sew up, if I'm honest. So when I was sewing these up on my machine, I was a little bit worried about um, breaking lots of needles because of the wool, especially where there was thicker parts to sew. So I used a jeans needle just to make sure um, that it was an enjoyable and easy sew and that my machine didn't skip stitches or anything like that. Um, my machines are faff, so it can handle most fabrics anyway. And I just think that gave me peace of mind when I was sewing it as well, especially when I was attaching the toggles because the toggles were leather. So I used my jeans needle to get over the, um, the leather to make sure that that was nice and secure too. Um, lining it was interesting. So there's a different method in here to what I'm used to for lining. So with the pockets, there was a different method to lining them to what I'm used to. So I just went with, with my method of lining them. Um, and what I tend to do when I'm lining is I just... So the I put the main fabric and the lining together and sew it from the top all the way round, leave a gap at the bottom, turn it through, press it, top stitch it, and then close that seam at the bottom. Um, I much prefer to do that. In here, there's a different instruction for lining the pockets. Um, so I think because I've been sewing for a few years now and I've tackled coats before, I just felt a bit more confident to go with my method of lining the pockets than what they were doing. And I think that's absolutely fine. Um, you just go with what's more comfortable for you and what you're familiar with. In terms of lining it, I would say it's not the bagged out method either. You attach it, you attach the lining. Let me just remind myself of the instructions. It feels like it's been ages ago since I made them. So yeah, you line, you attach the lining and the main fabric at the top and then turn it through. And then what you do for the rest of the um, attaching the lining to the main coat is you turn up the bottom and, and almost catch the lining in the bottom and then you do that with the sleeves too. I don't know if that's making any sense. And um, it was an interesting way of attaching the lining. 
Um, it gave a really neat finish on the inside. The only other thing I would say is I wish I had read the entire booklet before I attached the toggles because they leave the toggle fastening to the end, by which point I've already attached the lining. Um, and that didn't ruin it for me, but you could then see the stitching on the inside of the coat where I'd attached the toggles. And I would much rather have just had that on the main fabric and then have the lining fabric to hide those stitch marks. It just would have made it a more cleaner, neater finish on the inside. So I'm definitely gonna make some more of these because I've got a couple of other friends that have got children and I will just remember to do the toggles first before I attach the lining. Um, I just prefer a much neater finish on the inside of the coat. Overall, really pleased with the pattern, really pleased with the finished garments and I will put pictures in of what they look like. Um, they both turned out brilliantly and the recipients were absolutely delighted with them. So I'm really, really pleased. Um, I can definitely see myself making more of the duffel coats. Much more straightforward than I anticipated. I thought that it would take me a lot longer to make them and I thought that they would be more tricky. Um, but the instructions in here are written brilliantly. So I would definitely suggest and recommend this pattern if you were considering making coats for your little ones or coats as gifts. And then the other thing that I made for friends, might as well stay in my pyjamas, was two pairs of pomegranate pyjamas, which is another pattern by Poppy and Jazz. So this is what the pattern looks like. Again, comes in sizes 18 months to six years. I'll show you the line drawings, really cute traditional pyjamas. You've got this collar detail that comes down into the lapel. I think that's what you call that. Um, long sleeves and then standard pyjama bottoms with an elasticated waist up here. Super cute. I made two pairs, again, one pair for my nephew and one pair for our friend. Um, and that's not actually been posted off yet. I need to post it off today, but it's all wrapped up, so I'm not going to undo the envelope. Again, really enjoyable So The only thing to say about this is when you are attaching the facing here, there is nowhere in the booklet that tells you to interface the facing, and I'm used to when you're making a shirt or even when I made these pyjamas, there was some kind of interfacing to stop it from stretching out. It doesn't mention that in the booklet. So I had a look on Instagram to see who else had made these pyjamas and I got in touch with a lady who was really helpful to ask her opinion because she'd made them already. Normally in that situation, I would contact so over it, but it, with it being the Christmas holidays, I knew that they wouldn't get back to me. And because they were gifts, I was quite keen to get them sewn up and finished so I could get them off to the recipients. Um, and she recommended just thinking about the um, what type of fabric I was using. And I went with a cotton lawn, which was quite a thin fabric. And then I also went with a viscose, which is quite a fluid fabric. So with that in mind and thinking that they were pyjamas for children and also I had to put buttonholes and buttons on and I need that area of the pyjama top to be quite hard wearing. I did interface it just with some softer, lightweight interfacing and I'm really glad that I did. I think that area would have struggled, especially adding buttonholes and also getting the pyjamas on and off. And I'm just thinking I made them in age three to four, a toddler sort of moving around in their pyjamas and things. They do need to be quite hard wearing. And actually, I did get in touch with Sew Over It and ask them about whether double gauze would be a suitable fabric for the pyjamas because I had some double gauze that I was considering using. And they did, um, they said that double gauze would work, but just to consider what age I was making because double gauze isn't as strong as a cotton fabric. And children's clothes do need to be a bit more durable and hard wearing because of the way that they move around and charge around and things. So I didn't go with using the double gauze in the end. I did go with the viscose and I went with the cotton lawn. So in terms of fabric recommendations, um, they recommend light to medium weight woven fabrics like a viscose, cotton lawn, cotton poplin or quilting cottons. Um, and it goes from 18 to 24 months up to five to six years. Um, fabric recommendation or fabric requirements, should I say, you need between 1.6 metres and 1.8 metres if you've got a narrow fabric, so 115 centimetres, or 1.3 metres up to 1.6 metres if you've got 140 centimetre fabric. I think I did use about a metre and a half for both of them and I made age three to four. So I don't have the pyjamas with me, but I will put images in of what they look like. Um, and I was really pleased with the way that they were finished. Really, really cute pyjama, um, just a traditional pyjama pattern as well. And I was so pleased to be able to gift them, one to my nephew and one to my friend. Um, and I have been told, my nephew's quite dinky for um, his age, he's three and a half. 
So I have been told that there is quite a lot of room in for him. So that's just something else to consider. But another pattern by Poppy and Jazz that I would definitely recommend. And I think they've got a sale on at the moment. So if you wanted to grab yourself either of those patterns, you could get it for a bargain price. So those were two more makes that I got um, sewn up in December and they were gifts. So I'm going to get changed into something that's not pyjamas and I'll talk about my next make for you. Okay, I am back and I am wearing one of the dresses that I got sewn up in December. And it's using this beautiful brushed cotton that came in the latest So Hayley Jane box. I'll link all the details down below to the So Hayley Jane subscription boxes if you're interested. And there's also a link to um, get 10% off your first box using a special code that I've been given by Hayley. So I'll pop that down in the comments or description box down below as well. I think this was actually the last thing that I got sewn up in December, um, but it is the Elegy dress, Elegy wrap dress by Closet Core Patterns. Um, and I use this beautiful brushed cotton that I got from a So Hayley Jane box. Um, I love this pattern. This fabric is gorgeous and soft too. And I wore this yesterday for New Year's Day. Um, the Elodie wrap dress is definitely a firm favourite in my house. I absolutely love the wrap. It's nice and high, so I feel really secure. I do find quite often, I talked about this before and I talked about this with the lunar pyjamas, I do find quite often actually with um, wrap dresses that I don't feel really secure. Um, quite often the wrap is quite low and I feel like I'm in danger of exposing myself. But with this wrap dress, I don't feel like that at all. If I stand up and move back, you'll be able to see um, it's a lovely high crossover. And then you've got the tie detail here. Um, and then it's got this gorgeous full skirt. I went with view B, which is the midi skirt. And I'll just turn around so you can see what it looks like. Um, and then it's just got a grown on sleeve. So there's no inserting of sleeves, which I always absolutely love. The back bodice piece is cut in two pieces. I think it's moved quite over actually. There's the line and I tried really hard with pattern matching uh, with this fabric. Um, and I did the same on the front, but it's difficult when you are sort of tying it to try and make sure that it matches up. Anyway, the LED um, pattern from Closet Core Patterns comes in sizes zero to 20. So for a zero, the bust measurement is 31 inches waist measurement 24 inches and hip measurement 33 inches and that goes up to a size 20 which is a 46 inch bust 39 inch waist and 48 inch hip you get three variations and these are the line drawings so you've got a short mini skirt you've got midi skirt and then you've got a maxi now i have made the midi skirt for both versions and i absolutely love it it's such a comfortable dress the skirt is lovely and swishy, although in this fabric, because it's a cotton, a brushed cotton, it's not quite so swishy, but it just feels lovely. And this fabric is so comfortable and cosy. Um, it's a really lovely pattern to sew up. Um, really straightforward. As always, the closet core um, instructions are broken down into really fantastic step-by-step, -step, um, hold your hand, guide you through process. Um, and it, it was a really enjoyable sew. I really love closet core patterns. Um, I think their instructions are written brilliantly and they really guide you through the process. Um, to attach the bodice and the skirt, there is a waistband um, and the process of attaching the waistband is really straightforward too. And it guides you through that process too. It's a really enjoyable sew, I really enjoyed it. And then you've got this tie detail as well, which I'll stand up and show you in a second. Um, there is an option to add patch pockets, but I didn't want patch pockets. Um, I've made this dress before and I didn't put patch pockets on the previous version either. Um, I just didn't want that fussiness um, because this fabric, it's a tartan and it is quite a busy fabric. I didn't want that fuss fussiness on here either. Um, so there is an option to either, to, I have only just noticed this actually, tie it at the back or tie it on the side. I prefer to tie it on the side. I'll just stand up so you can see what the tie is like. It's quite a long tie, which I also really like without exposing myself so it starts here um, and then you've pulled the other piece through on the inside so yeah you could just pull it round and tie it at the back um, and then you haven't got that sort of extra bulk here and that's what it looks like when it's tied at the back um, my preference is just to tie it here but yeah you can put um, pockets on here but I just think with the tartan it would be a bit too busy um, I find this pattern really comfortable. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, 
light to medium weight wovens like linen, cotton poplin, batiste, val and chambray will give it a more casual feel. And then you can choose a drapey woven like silk, viscose, tensile or rayon chalice for a more elegant or fluid effect. Um, so this is quite a, it's not heavy fabric, but it's a brushed cotton. So it is more weighty um, than perhaps a linen or a cotton poplin. But I would say it still works. It just holds the shape a bit more. The skirt isn't quite as swishy. It does just hold the shape a little bit more. I stand up you'll be able to see I mean it still moves there's still swishiness in it um, but it does feel heavier to wear it's a nice winter wrap dress and I did wear this yesterday I just put a vest on underneath for an extra layer of warmth cardigan and woolly tights with thick boots and it was a really nice winter dress and I could see myself although it's in sort of Christmassy colours because it's red tartan I think it is a dress that I would be able to still wear in the winter even when it's not the Christmas season so I think I will still wear it love this pattern can't talk more highly of it i just really like how high the wrap is and i didn't have to do a full bust adjustment which quite often i have to do when it's a wrap dress so i would definitely recommend the led dress and it's in this beautiful i can't get over how soft and snuggly this fabric is it's so comfortable to wear so another lovely make which i'm really pleased with so i'm going to get changed into another dress that i got sewn up in december Okay, I've got changed into my next dress that I sewed up and I had to wear this one just so you can see what the sparkles is like. Sparkles is like, I had to wear this one just so you can see what the sparkles are like with this fabric. Now this is a dress that's a little bit over the top. We had absolutely nowhere to go. I did wear it, however, to the supermarket to do some food shopping. And I think I will continue to wear it to places like that just for a little bit of fun. Um, this dress was inspired by a dress that my daughter's got. So every year in school they get to have a Christmas party and we always go shopping so that she can choose a new party dress. One year I will get my act together and actually sew her a party dress, but this year I just didn't. So we went shopping and she found this dress in H&M and actually it was a really enjoyable experience because both of my girls are starting to have more of a preference over what they want to wear and you know they've got a bit more of an idea about their personal style. So it was really fun watching them go around and decide what they thought would suit them and what wouldn't and what they really wanted to wear. So she chose this dress and I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like. Um, but it's just, it's a dress that reminded me of the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress. It's got this exposed ruffle here and then it's got the exposed, not ruffle, exposed seam on the skirt tear panel. It's got a fabric underneath, just a pink fabric, and then this tall fabric over the top, which has got loads of stars all over it. And then the sleeves, I've got this gorgeous sort of see-through tool, um, and they're finished with an elastic at the bottom, and then they're a little bit poofy on the um, shoulder. It's finished with a keyhole fastening at the back, um, and yeah, I just absolutely love the dress. I absolutely loved it on her. It's really fun and swishy and just a really exciting um, and just lovely party dress. Children's, pa children's clothes in the shops I find are always a really fun sort of way of getting inspiration for your own wardrobe. And I loved her dress so much that I thought, why not give it a go and try and make myself one that's similar. I couldn't find pink tall fabric with stars on. I do remember seeing black tall fabric with stars on, but then when I went back to have a look at all the different shops that I normally, um, fabric shops that I normally go to, I couldn't find it. So if anyone knows or has seen black tall fabric with stars on, do let me know, because I'd still quite like to go and get some of that and recreate this dress using black fabric. But anyway, I had to look in my stash to see what fabrics I had, and then I ordered this tall fabric from Fabric Godmother. I think it was like three pound a meter or something. It was really, really cheap, really reasonably priced. And then I had to look at my patterns to see what patterns could I use to hack together and create a dress that's really similar to the one that my daughter's got. So I started with the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress. It's probably my most used pattern from last year. I absolutely love it. Um, there's lots of different details that you can do. So you can do the top, you can do the skirt, um, it's got different sleeve lengths, so you can do the sleeves, the top with the frill and the flounce sleeves. You can do the top with the gathered seam and flounce sleeves. You can do the dress with the gathered seams, bracelet sleeves and pockets, and then you can, and that's the back. The indigo comes in sizes UK 6 to UK 24. 
it's a pattern that I've used loads and loads and loads and you can do this exposed seam ruffle here too. So that was the pattern that I started with and that was the main body of the dress. But it was the sleeves that I wanted to be nice and poofy. So I used the Tilly and the Buttons Billy dress because of the balloon sleeves. Where is it? Because of the balloon sleeve detail on the back. I knew that that pattern piece would give me that volume that I wanted. And then I just extended the pattern piece um, because on the billy, it's designed to be made in sweatshirt fabric or stretch fabric. And then you've got this cuff detail. I didn't want the cuff detail. I wanted to be able to finish it with the elastic like my daughter's dress has. So I just extended the sleeve so that it would finish at my wrist. And then I just um, turned it over and then turned it over again to create an elastic channel so that I got the same sleeve detail as my daughter's dress. So the billy pattern is not designed for woven fabrics, but I knew it would work because I was only using the sleeve pattern and I could sort of gather that into the, the shoulder head so that I got a bit of volume here as well. So I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like. I've also got video footage of me twirling in it and I've got some photos of me wearing the dress too. Um, but what I did was, if I lift the skirt up so you can see, I've just got a linen fabric underneath. It has creased a little bit. Um, just a green linen. Um, where did I get this from? Oh, I can't remember where I got it from. I'll link it down below and if I remember I'll put a card in or a little detail so I can um, tell you where I got it from. And then I just got this tall fabric which has got like... Um, glitter all over it. I don't know if you can see it shimmering in the sunshine. It's probably good that we've got sunshine shining through. And I just used loads of this. I think I got three meters of this and I had two meters of the linen. And then I just, um, I wanted to keep the sleeve see-through. So I used the billy pattern to get the volume on the shoulder. And then I just finished it with elastic at the bottom. And I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I did the exposed ruffle here and that is attached. So like my daughter's dress, the top part is attached. It's just the skirt that is not attached. So you get this almost like overlay detail. And if I stand up so you can see the bottom, um, it's just got this frill. And I deliberately made the frill longer than the skirt piece underneath so that you've got that lovely detail at the bottom. And I'm so pleased with how it's turned out. Um, I do wish I had a party to go to so that I could wear it. I love how it moves. It's really swishy and it's just a really fun dress um, to wear. And like I said, I have worn it to the supermarket. I just put thick black tights on. Um, I've got a denim jacket in duck egg blue so it goes beautifully with it. And I put my thick, um, not my thick, and then I put my black boots on and I just went shopping. Um, made me smile and I think in the month of January, I'm probably going to do that a little bit more. I might document it, go shopping in some fancy dresses just for the fun of it. Um, with the neckline, because I was attaching the tall fabric and I knew that it would be slightly scratchy, I just finished the neckline with bias binding, just so that it's not scratchy on my neck. Um, but yeah, really, really pleased with this over the top, um, silly, fancy dress that I will wear. I will definitely get lots and lots of wear out. And my daughter loves the fact that we've now got a dress that's similar. So I do want to try and make something else. And I also just really love, I've said this before, but I love getting a moment of inspiration and then just being able to turn it into what the idea that you've got in your mind. So I'm delighted with this lovely dress that my daughter said looks like an Elsa dress. Somebody else commented and said it looks like a fairy from Peter Pan. So either way, I'm happy. And actually, I might wear it to school one day because my class are absolutely love Frozen. So I think the girls particularly, and some of the boys, would love if I turned up wearing an Elsa dress. We could just have an Elsa day. I think it'd be really good fun. Okay, I'm going to get changed into another outfit and I'll be back. Okay, I am back and it's another party dress. Um, once I had made the Elsa dress, um, I had some glittery sequin fabric that I also got from Fabric Godmother because it was quite reasonably priced and I just love sequins and glitter. Um, and I only got enough to do a skirt. So I was just going to do a skirt with um, an elastic waistband. But then when I sorted through my fabrics, which I had a big tidy up in my sewing area, I came across this Atelier Brunette fabric and I only had... I think I only had a metre of this as well. So I started hatching plans to put the two fabrics together and I came up with another version of the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress. 
but again I used the sleeve pattern from the Billy um, the balloon sleeve pattern and again it's not meant for wovens but it did work for this pattern the only thing I forgot to do was lengthen it so I've ended up with three quarter length sleeves which is fine um, but in hindsight I would have lengthened them um, because I think I would have preferred the sleeve to go to my my wrist as opposed to just below my elbow and I'll stand up in a second to show you but the top half is this lovely balloon sleeve um, and then the top half of the indigo and then the bottom half is just a straight skirt using all of the sequin fabric that I had left because I used some of the sequin fabric to make a jumper which I'm going to share um, when I share all of the jumpers that I made but I'll stand up so you can see so it's got a high bodice um, and then this is the skirt and I have got tights and underneath because the sequin's quite see-through so you would have like I would have to wear this with tights it's too thin not to wear with tights anyway um, and these are the sleeves so they are sort of three quarter length which creates this you know voluminous sleeve detail but I would have preferred them to go down to here I am considering making them even shorter but then I would lose this lovely balloon shape which I absolutely adore I'll stand up so you can see the skirt um, but yeah it just stops at my knees it's a lovely sparkly shimmery skirt that goes all the way back and I just used the indigo pattern as normal sewed up so I've done this version the dress with the I guess with the bracelet sleeves but I didn't use the bracelet sleeve pattern so it's just the dress with the gathered seams and then I've got the balloon sleeve pattern on so I sewed up a UK size 10 uh, which is a Tilly size 3 going off my bust measurement which is 34 inches and it fits me nicely there's quite a lot of room in there which is great for when you're partying um, and then with the skirt I've left the bottom of the skirt unhemmed because it's sequins and I think that that will be absolutely fine so I just didn't hem that at all and then where I've attached the bodice to the skirt because of the sequins I've just put some bias tape all the way around that on the inside just to make it a little bit more comfortable because these sequins can be a bit scratchy um, and then I finished the sleeve in the same way where I've overlocked it turned it up turned it up again and created a channel just for the elastic to go in and then I just measured the elastic on this part of my arm just to see what felt comfortable. But I'm really pleased with how that's turned out too. It's another sort of over the top party dress when I've got nowhere to go, but I've enjoyed wearing it just around the house. And who knows, I might wear this to the supermarket as well to do my seed shopping. Um, so I'm gonna get changed into another dress that I got sewn up. I am back and I am wearing another make, another dress. And this is one that I wanted to make so that I can have another dress to wear to work. Um, it is the Tilly and the Buttons again. I seem to be making all of Tilly's patterns this month. Lot of dress. So I have made this dress before, but I've made it in wovens. So I haven't actually made it in a stretch before. And I had this beautiful green cotton jersey. I, can't, I still can't remember where I got it from, um, but it's beautiful. I love the colour and I've got all the polka dots all over it. And it's really comfortable because it's a cotton jersey. So I wanted to use this to make the Lot of Dress. What I ended up deciding to do was I went for the knee length rather than the midi length because there are different variations that you can go for. So you can do the midi length with the bracelet length sleeve. You can do the knee length with short sleeves, which is what I've gone for. Or you can do midi length with short sleeves and pockets. I didn't put pockets on. I haven't put pockets on any of my lot of dresses that I've made. And then that's what the back looks like. Really straightforward dress. You just throw it on over your head. There's no fastenings super comfortable it's got an elastic channel around the waist which i'll stand up and show you in a minute and then with the jersey you add a neckband along here which was really easy to add it's got grown on sleeves because i didn't choose to add the bracelet length on and then like i said there's two variations in the skirt length um it's a sewing pattern for beginners the fabric suggestions light to medium weight drapey fabrics like a shawn braid viscose tensile double gauze brushed cotton or crepe and um, if you wanted to try a stretch fabric, single knit, drapey jersey, stretch velvet or lightweight French terry. So I've gone with a cotton, which doesn't have as much drape as maybe a viscose jersey, but I would still say it works beautifully and it's really comfortable. It just holds the shape a little bit more. This pattern comes in sizes UK six to UK 24. So I made a UK 10, because again, I went off my bust measurement. 
um, and UK six is 30 inch bust, 24 inch waist and a 33 inch hip. And then a UK 24 is a 48 inch bust, 42 inch waist and a 51 inch hip. Really straightforward pattern. You sew up the bodice, sew up the skirt, attach them and then create this waist channel um, by pressing it down and then stitching along. And then you insert the elastic and it creates this really lovely stretchy um, channel across your waist. So it's super comfortable. You get a bit of a blousy effect on top. And then if I stand up, you'll be able to see the skirt. I have got pictures of me wearing this, so you'll be able to see what it looks like. But it's quite a nice full skirt. And because it's a cotton jersey, it's holding that shape a little bit more than maybe a drapier fabric. Um, really straightforward pattern to put together. Um, I'd probably say it took a couple of hours to sew up. When you make the woven, you attach a facing around here, but for the jersey, you attach the neckband. Um, and that was the only fiddly bit really. Oh, and also I find it really fiddly when you're threading the elastic through the channel where you've got the side seams. Um, I find it really fiddly to like wiggle the elastic through. Um, but yeah, really love the lotter. I can't speak more highly of it. I've made loads and loads really comfortable but it also just feels like a nice dress to put on so i'm really pleased that i've got another dress that i'll be able to add to my work wardrobe and it does feel like i'm wearing secret pajamas it's so comfortable and cozy um and this would work because it's got a high neck it would work if i wore a long sleeve top underneath just for an extra layer i'm just thinking about when the weather's a little bit colder um I don't think there's anything else. Oh, in terms of fabric requirements, if you're going knee length, you need two and a half metres. And if midi length, 2.8 metres. I think I made this from two metres. I think I only had two metres of fabric. So I think you can squeeze it out of two metres, definitely. Um, so another really great addition to my wardrobe, which I absolutely love. And I can definitely see more jersey lotters in my wardrobe. Okay, um, I'm not going to get changed again because I'm going to talk about what I made for my husband. Okay, I made him three things as Christmas gifts. I made him two t-shirts and a pair of pyjama bottoms. And I have got one of the t-shirts here and then the other one, he's currently wearing them as his pyjamas and loungewear at home. He's worn them all loads, which is brilliant. I love it when I make something for him and he, and he likes wearing them and he wears them lots because that shows me that he does like them. So this was a new to me pattern. It's a pattern by Studio Jetson Patterns and it's the Rider menswear tee, which is quite a straightforward um, t-shirt. There is an option to add a pocket at the back, which I didn't do for these versions because um, I just wanted to make, I wanted something quick basically because I made these on Christmas Eve. I made both of his t-shirts and pajama bottoms on Christmas Eve. Um, so I just needed something that I knew would sew up quite quickly. And that just goes to show how brilliant this pattern is and how straightforward it is. I was able to sew two and a pair of pyjama bottoms on Christmas Eve for him. So it only took me, I think, less than an hour to do one t-shirt. And once I'd made that, I thought, well, actually, it's not taking me too long. I could make him another one. In terms of sizes, it comes in extra small to extra, extra large. There's some more line drawings there for you to see. So it's got a, sh um, a short sleeve. Um, it is quite long and it does come up, sort of sits on his hips, I think, from memory. I will put pictures in of, the, of him wearing these t-shirts so you can see what they look like. But there's another picture of what it looks like. Um, there is a ladies t-shirt pattern from Studio Jepson. I haven't made the ladies t-shirt yet, but I would really like to. I'm just getting the sizes for you. Um, so it comes in sizes extra small to extra, extra large. Chest measurement for extra small is 33 to 35 inches and waist measurement 27 to 29 inches. And then for an extra, extra large, 48 to 50 inches for chest measurement and 42 to 44 inches for waist. I made him a medium, which he fits into with his measurements and it's quite comfortable. He's got quite a lot of room in there too. And then you also get the finished garment measurements, which I really like as well. I find that really helpful when pattern companies include the finished garment measurements because then it just gives you a bit more of an idea of um like the room and, and what it will feel like when you've finished your garment so it just says light to medium weight knit fabrics with a minimum of 10 percent crosswise stretch like cotton elastane jersey interlock and lightweight french terry so i made him two the first version i've got here and i used a fabric that i got from the new craft house which is this blue 
striped i don't know what type of fabric it's called it is a stretch fabric you'll be able to see it does stretch and it's got the right percentage of stretch but it's got a texture to it and i'm not quite sure what type of fabric it's called but he loves this version and he's worn it loads really quite straightforward um i made sure that i took my time to pattern match on the side seams where else is the side seam so i did make sure i pattern matched can't hold it up the pat i did make sure i pattern match the stripes on the on the uh, side seams as well um so yeah short sleeve you've got the neck band that you attach short sleeve obviously on the other side and then it's just a standard t-shirt but it was so straightforward to sew up i would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a t-shirt pattern for a man in your life and i'm going to make some more t-shirts for him but i'm also going to make some t-shirts for my dad too and then the other t-shirt that I made, same pattern, but it's in a white and gray fabric that I got from Like So Amazing. So I'll put a picture in of him wearing that t-shirt. And then I made the gray and the white stripy one as a pajama top to go with the Joe pajamas from Tilly and the Buttons, which I'll just grab the pattern for. Here it is. It's a really straightforward pajama bottoms, straight up and down, elasticated waist, and then there's an option to create a drawstring if you can see the drawstring on the pattern um, but there's an option to create a drawstring for the pajamas and I used an orange cotton fabric that I had in my stash I've had it in my stash for ages um, my husband's quite fussy when it comes to choosing fabrics which is absolutely fine um, and my husband had fun looking through my fabrics to see which ones he liked the look of so that I could make him some pajamas the J pajamas were a really straightforward pajama pattern. Okay, I've got the pattern details. I just think it's useful to show you the line drawings more than anything. Because the J pajamas can be made up as shorts or pajama bottoms. So these are what I made up. Pajama bottoms here, and then these are the shorts. They're finished with an elasticated waist, and then you've also got the option to create the drawstring, which was a fun thing to make. Um, it comes in sizes 28 to 46. So you go off your low waist measurement. So for a size 28, it's a 28 inch waist. And then for a size 46, it's a 46 inch waist. Um, he's really pleased with how they fit. Um, in terms of fabrics, fabric su suggestions, light to medium weight woven fabrics like cotton lawn, shirting, quilting cotton, flannel, double gauze, and viscose or rayon. And I just made it in a cotton, I think it was a cotton pot fin that I had in my stash for ages. Um, and they sewed up really quickly, um, quite straightforward to sew up. Let me just have a look, remind myself of the pattern piece. So yeah, you've only got a couple of pattern pieces. You've got the front leg and the back leg. Um, and then you fold over the top of the trousers to create the waistband casing. And then if you want to do the drawstring, you can put in a but two buttonholes at the top to create the drawstring um, and then thread the drawstring through once you put your elastic in um, and that was a really fun process and I think he quite likes having the elastic for comfort but then the drawstring just to pull it in if he needs to and like I say he hasn't stopped wearing them so I'm really pleased I can definitely see myself making more pajama bottoms for him so that I can get those ones in the wash so he's got some other ones to wear so I definitely recommend it definitely a beginner friendly pattern as well so if you are just at the beginning of your sewing journey it's a great pattern to sew up if you want to make something for somebody else um there's also the um ladies pajama bottoms pattern by telling the buttons and that's called the jamie pattern um and i'll put links to all of those down below as well so another successful make and again i'll put images in of him wearing the pajamas um, then I've got one more dress and then the rest of the things to show you are um, jumpers. So I'm going to put the other dress on. Okay, back with my final dress that I made this month. And I wanted something that would look nice, but be comfortable for Christmas Day. Because I was doing the cooking on Christmas Day. Um, I love doing the cooking, so I don't mind doing that. But I did want something that I would feel comfortable in, but still feel like I was dressed up, even though we weren't going anywhere. Um, we were just staying at home. I still wanted to have something nice to wear. So I got some, and I'd wanted to make this dress actually in velvet for ages. So I had to look online and I found some velvet from Semi Sunshine. It's this beautiful blue colourway. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I think Harriet might still have some velvets on her website. So I'll link it down below if she does still have some left. So I used the Tilly and the Buttons Lotta dress, which I've already shared in this video, but I'll talk again about it 
comes in sizes UK 6 to UK 24. I made a UK 10 going off my bust measurement. It's a really comfortable dress. This velvet has got stretch in it, which is what I wanted. I wanted to make sure that it had stretch so it was nice and comfortable. It's got the elasticated waistband, which is really comfortable as well, especially if you're going to eat lots and lots. Uh, and I do struggle with bloating throughout the day, so it's important that it was comfortable around that area for me. Um, the, it comes in sizes 6 to 24. A UK 6 is a 30 inch bust, 24 inch waist and a 33 inch hips. Uh, and then a UK 24 is a 48 inch bust, 42 inch waist and a 51 inch hip. I went for the midi length skirt, which is this one. I didn't add pockets because again, I didn't want that fussiness and I just went with the grown on sleeve. And actually you'll be able to see when I come a bit closer, I haven't hemmed this because it's velvet fabric. So I didn't feel like I needed to, and I didn't want to stretch it out or cause it to look, um, I just worried that hemming it would make it look a little bit silly. And it's the same with the skirt. I haven't hemmed it either, but I think it's absolutely fine. I love the shine that you get on this fabric. So I've just got the neck band in here. Uh, and then you've got the elasticated waist, which makes it super comfortable, lovely swishy skirt. And I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like on. So I've gone with the midi, so it does go beyond my knee. It's going to be very difficult to show you that. It's got so much swish, this velvet. It's amazing. I love how it moves. And it was such a comfortable dress to wear on Christmas Day. I just absolutely loved wearing it. So that's what it looks like really straightforward pattern again I've already talked about how easy it is to put together and sewing with velvet wasn't difficult either um, sewing with velvet was absolutely fine the only thing that I found was when I was cutting out all the little fluffy bits of velvet went all over my carpet so I had to get the hoover out quite a lot um, but I'm really pleased with how this has turned out it's really comfortable to wear um, and I love the blue color actually because if I'd have gone with a more Christmassy colour like green or red, I wouldn't have felt like I would have been able to wear it any other time. But because it's blue, I could wear this any time, really. Um, and I just put tights on underneath and it was super comfortable to wear. So another really comfortable dress that I'm really, really pleased with. And this um, this beautiful velvet from Sumi Sunshine is just absolutely gorgeous and soft. And it's got so much movement to it, which is lovely. It's quite weighty because it's a velvet, but it's still super swishy. So I'm really pleased with my Lotta and I wore it all day on Christmas day and it was really comfortable. Comfortable for cooking. Obviously I've just put a pinny over the top of it when I was cooking and really comfortable when I was eating and also just lounging around with my family. So another really successful make, which I can see myself getting lots of wear out of, um, even if I just wear it around the house to feel like it's something nice or it could be another dress that I just wear to the supermarket. Um, the last few makes that I've got to share with you are all the same pattern and they're all jumpers. So I'm going to get changed and I will put each one on for you just so you can see what they look like. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I am back with my first um, Billy jumper, which I got sewn up. So let me grab the pattern. So this is another Tilly in the Buttons pattern. So I did use a lot of Tilly's patterns this month um, and interchange them. This one I just used this pattern. I didn't do anything else. I didn't use any other patterns. Um, to hack it or anything. Um, so this is the Tilly and the Buttons Billy sweatshirt and sweater dress pattern. Um, it's aimed at confident beginners and it comes in sizes UK 6 to UK 24. Um, so UK 6 is a bust measurement 30 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and a hip measurement 33 inches. And then a UK 24 is a 48 inch bust, 42 inch waist and a 51 inch um, hip. I went with a UK 10, because again, I went off my bust measurement, which is 34 inches. My waist is a 26, 27 inch waist at the moment, which would have put me in a um, UK 8. And then my hips are a 35 inch, which, have, which would have put me in a UK 8. I went with a 10, because I didn't want it to be tight across my bust. And that's really where it, you know, the, where it mattered for fitting, because I was going with the jumper version. So with the billy pattern, you can make uh, there's four different variations. Version one is a regular sleeved top, just here. Um, version two has got these amazing balloon sleeves, and that's the top. Version three is just a regular sleeve dress, and version four is a balloon sleeve dress. And then there's also an option to add pockets, which you can just see on this version. Now, I haven't sewn the billy to add pockets yet. Um, I just worry about the pockets adding too much bulk around the hip area. 
Um, but the versions that I sewed up this month were all jumpers. Um, one of them, just version one, which is the regular sleeve top, and that's the one that I'm wearing now. I've got a black glittery skirt on because it goes with most of the jumpers. It doesn't go with this jumper, but it just saves me having to get even more things out of my wardrobe because my bedroom's looking quite messy. Um, so this jumper doesn't go with what I'm wearing, but I've just put it on just to, to show you what the jumper looks like. So you've got a band at the bottom and then I prefer to tuck that band under and then you get this lovely blousy effect. It's really comfortable. And then with this version, I just went with the standard sleeve. So it's a straight sleeve. Um, and I had a scrap of this velvet left over after I made my velvet lotta. And I had some sequins left over after I made my sequin indigo. Um, and this is what it looks like. So it's got the neck band and I just put the sequins as the sleeves. Um, and that's what it looks like at the back. And I'm really pleased. I made this as part of the So Cozy Jumper Challenge, which was over on Instagram. Um, and it really helped me get my sojo back. It was just something a little bit fun. I was a bit worried about putting the sequins with the velvet because I wasn't sure if it would go. But actually, I think that they go really nicely together. So I'm really pleased. Um, I didn't hem it because of the sequin mesh. I didn't think it needed to be hemmed. Um, so it was quite straightforward so really so that was my first billy and I'm going to get changed to show you the other billies that I got sewn up because I made another I think I made another three yeah I made another three so I'll just get changed okay on to my next billy jumper so this one I decided to go with version two which has got the balloon sleeves and I absolutely love the detail of that balloon sleeve you get this bit of poofiness on the shoulder then it's gathered into this really deep cuff which i absolutely love so this is the next version and this is made using a fabric that i got from felicity fabrics so if i crouch down you can see what it looks like and i just love those sleeves i didn't think i'd be a big sleeve person but i just love the funness that you get from that being gathered into that deep cuff i love the deep cuff because i like covering my hands when i feel cold uh, and again i've just turned the hem up so there's the hem band and I just prefer to turn it up like that and then you get that sort of blousy effect and then you've just got the neck band along here and then the poofiness in the shoulders. Now this jersey fabric is a cotton jersey that I got from Felicity Fabrics and it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the pops of colour that you get from the pinks and the blues and the yellows and it's just going to be a really fun addition to my wardrobe and I'm currently making some black um, Jennifer Lauren um, Bastion collots, which I think a lot of my jumpers and tops will go with. Um, and I think that'll be quite a cute outfit to wear. So this was the next one, really easy to sew up and really fun. I'll get changed into the next one so you can see what it looks like. Okay, this is the next one, exactly the same version. So I made version two with the amazing balloon sleeves and I used this fantastic cotton jersey that I got from New Craft House. And I've had it in my stash for ages and I just didn't know what to turn it into. It's red and then it's got all these dancing bears all over it, which I absolutely love. So again, you've got the band at the bottom and I prefer to just tuck that under and then you get that blousy effect. We've got the cuff detail here and then this balloon sleeve that's gathered into the cuff and you get that gorgeous poofiness on the shoulders too. Really comfortable. If I just move my chair out of the way so you can see. Uh, and it does go with this skirt actually, really, really comfortable and just fun. Um, I love the pop of colour that you get from that red. And then when you look closer, it's got these dancing bears on, which are just really fun. And I'm really pleased that I've used this fabric because I've had it in my stash for absolutely ages. So I have got one more jumper to share with you and that's everything that I've sewn up in December. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, back with my final version. And again, it's made in a cotton jersey. I did exactly the same version two sweater jumper with the balloon sleeves. Um, it's got the neck band detail. It's got the cuff on the bottom, uh, not the cuff on the bottom. It's got the band on the bottom, which again, I like to just tuck under. It's got the deep cuff and then it's gathered in and then um, gathered up there. Gathering the balloon sleeve into the cuff is quite fiddly. I used lots and lots of clips to make sure that it was evenly distributed before stitching it into the cuff. Um, and the same with the sleeve. Pay attention to the notches. There's notches on the pattern piece for where you need to start that gathering for the, the shoulder. 
Um, and then, yeah, with the cuff, I just really took my time to make sure that it was evenly distributed all the way around because you want that volume all the way around the cuff. You don't want it to just be in one area. So I'm really pleased with all of those jumpers and I've worn them loads already. Um, and I can see myself wearing them at school. And this fabric is from Felicity Fabrics and it's really fun. It's a blue background, so it doesn't really go with my sparkly skirt. Um, with lots and lots of different pops of colour again. I just love anything that's got bright colours on, um, especially in the winter when it's quite chilly. I still like to wear a nice bright colourful wardrobe. So that is a roundup of everything that I got sewn up in December. I got lots and lots of things made and lots of useful pieces for my wardrobe. A few things that maybe I'll only ever get worn for special occasions or if I'm feeling a bit, a little bit like I need a bit of fun, but they were definitely really fun things to make and tested my skills so that I could, you know, I find it really fun finding something that's ready to, ready to wear and then trying to look at what patterns I've got and creating it myself. And matching my girls as well with their clothes is always really fun. So I enjoyed making those. I hope you enjoyed listening to what I got sewn up and made in December. Um, back to work next week, so I won't be getting as much sewn up. But I am currently making something for my mum. I'm working on an Eden coat for her, which I should have had done in February um, 2020 for her birthday. So that's a work in progress that's been on the back burner for a really long time. But I am... Um, getting it finished so hopefully I'm just waiting for the zip to arrive so hopefully I'll get that finished then before I go there was one more thing I wanted to talk about and it is a, a challenge I guess um that I've seen over on Instagram created by Georgina who is so in the garden I link all her details down below and she's written a blog post about this as well it's something that she's set up for herself but she's inviting other people to join in if they would like to and it is a hashtag 360 days of sewing so Georgina is going to, or she is challenging herself to share a snippet of sewing every day over on her Instagram page. And she's inviting other people to do the same, where you put your name, um, so hashtag, it would be Liz's 365 days of sewing, or hashtag Georgina's 365 days of sewing. Um, and you can just share a picture of something that it doesn't have to actually be you sewing, but it could be something to do with your makes or your plans or your sketches or some fabric you've seen or a pattern you're inspired by. Um, but Georgina is going to be posting something every day um, just as a little bit of motivation um, and to help with the new year. And I am going to be joining in. And I know that Tamlin from Sewn on the Tine is joining in. Um, and I know that there's a couple of other people that are joining in too. So I link, um, I'll link Georgina's blog post because it was really interesting to read and I'll link her Instagram so you can go and check her out too. But it sounds like something really fun that I'm going to try and get myself involved into. So if you don't follow me over on Instagram, I am at the baker that sews and I do share sneak peeks of things that I've made throughout the month. Um, so if you don't follow me on there already, do head over there and see what I'll be sharing for this year. I'm also going to do a video all about my Make 9 plans and it's the first year that I'll be joining in with Make 9 but I, I would like to put down on paper I guess some of the projects that I really would like to say this year like I really want to nail a good pair of jeans so that's something that I'm going to be working on so I've got that vlog um, I've got a few sew-alongs that I'm working on and I've got my Q&A and some top five vlogs so lots and lots of vlogs coming your way soon um, I hope you managed to make it to the end. I do anticipate this video has gone on for a very long time. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, do hit that subscribe button, button because I've got lots and lots of vlogs heading your way. Hope whatever you're up to, you are keeping safe and well. And I'll be back soon with another video. Take care. Bye.